Uh, I'm, my name is Steve Horn. I live at uh, 123 Forest um, and active in the PTO. My son's in second grade. My daughter will start there next year in kindergarten. You're the head of the Koshokan PTO, right? I'm vice president. Vice so, president. Yeah, but, but active. Okay. So, okay. Right on. My name is Louisa Magda. I also have um, two sons. One is in the fourth high school, and the other one is third grade in Koshokan Elementary. Um, the 403 East Lost Are there other PTO members here? No, no one else can make it tonight. I just wasn't sure. I know how many you needed tonight. No, you guys are fun. We can have a lot, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and the principal is ready to show up. I have not finished it. So, do you guys want to talk for a minute about what you know and the microphone? Well, well I, I, talked, I talked to a couple members of the school board, and they're in the same situation that, that worked at Burnham. And they start maintaining the alley and plowing that they're going to have to do it all the time and repair and fix the black top. And their main concern is the residents on the other side of them and the residents at the end of the alley. If they solve it and start maintaining it, they're going to have to maintain that property still. And they don't want to take the, the responsibility for that. And that's the same thing with the bar. If we start maintaining the plow, solving it, we're going to have to take ownership and do it all the time. Which sets so a big precedent for the whole world, which yeah, brings up other things. Um, and how did it cost, that's a big cost to the bar. No, the school board said to you guys. Well, they, I mean, they plowed it the last time through, um, you know, and agreed that, that it needed to be taken care of. I mean, really, what, what drew attention to this is the last real heavy ice and snow yeah. that we had. We had a, a parent's car slide down the back of the hill and almost hit a police car. Yeah. Um, it was right um, at the end of Yeah, yeah. Of so I mean cars, of all the cars to hit. I know, <laughs> I know. And, you know that's kind of like well like quite a different discussion we'd be having if that actually you know they weren't able to right. stop. Um, you know the, the the there's one pothole that's grown to a point that it's it's become quite deep and, and it is actually I actually walked past it this afternoon just to, to make sure I was had the facts straight. It isn't actually in on the property line of the school. It's actually the next house over that's right behind the school. Um, so, you know, I mean, you know, I know that there was some discussions between the you know, school board and the borough before, but unfortunately everyone involved in the, the elementary school didn't, were out of the loop on that. I mean, the principal didn't know anything about it, you know, I discussed with her the last couple of weeks. So, you know, I said I'd be willing to come in, you know, kind of take the lead to try to figure out we could broker some sort of a solution. I mean, be it, you know, if it is, you know, you, know, you mentioned there's a couple alleys that there's exceptions for, maybe there's something we could do to try to make that happen to make it more owned by the borough or, or maybe have some arrangement between the school board and the borough just to fix it because at the end of the day i mean you know there's a responsibility issue and i know there's issue around whose cost and all that but we are talking about parents of kajahaka taxpayers and you know so, so councilman phipps had a suggestion that made total common sense to me well, well first of all who gave the school permission to, to use that yeah. as a drop-off point that, that's a great point. I mean, that, you know, that's and that's one thing. You know, what one of the discussions we have is that you know, I mean, maybe we could look to even change and drop off to be there's a side door on Third Avenue, but but, but there's some parking there, so we'd have to you know maybe adjust zoning for parking or something along that line. So I mean, I think there is you know a bit of you know confusion on what to do. And the school has, I mean, you know, the, the number of families in that school has greatly increased over the last few years. I mean, there's 200 children in the school. But the other people in the alley, that's what they're complaining about. None of these valleys get much traffic at that path. And that, they said they're not going to fix it because the schools have always been there and right. well, in and out. You know, right. In a way, it's like neighbor versus neighbor. <coughs> neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Right. Um, and that, they don't want to fix it. They said the school should fix that because they use it more than anybody. Huh? Jump up from here. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I, yeah. I know from before someone had said that they had talked to the police about possibly changing where we pick up our children because I'm one that uses the alleyway to pick up my children. And that the police said the way that uh, the cars would have to line up, it's a hazard. And that it's not, it's just not feasible because there's too much traffic that it would cause and, and the problems it would cause the neighborhood in general. Mike, we already have issues with when the cars are in the line that they already start backing up all the way up Harry. Right. And yeah, that's already an issue. And back, with everyone that's doing it, it, it uh, becomes an issue. So yeah, everyone I mean, tries to be cognizant of it and, and aware. I mean, you know, just one other point on that is, you know, it is a somewhat unique situation for the school board because every other school has, they're not in a residential area. You know, they have, they have, you know, like Rich Park has a driveway. And, you know, here we're actually even struggling with just parking, you know, for the people that don't want to go through the car line. 
you know, the banks threatening to tow people to park there for the, you know, the five minutes to drop the children off. So and we definitely have an issue of the, that the school's grown to a level that, you know, and, and time to change, no one's walking to school quite as much. People are dropping kids off going to work or what have you. So, you know, it's definitely something that needs to, some sort of a solution. Here's, here's we, a, go ahead. We did have issues years ago when the uh, drop off and pick up was out front on Third Avenue. Um, that was before uh, some of the signs that was already out there. But there was long lines of cars and kids getting in cars. So yeah, it is a concern of mine with the street right there. Um, right. I would prefer to stay in the back. I have a, I have, uh, in the alley. what yeah, about, in, in the alley, yes. In the alley. What if, because I had talked to the facilities manager of the school board, and that was the one, um, Terry Yen, who actually had our driveway plowed the last time for us. And he said that he, you know, it's not, it, even though it's only supposed to be one plow through, of course this guy would plow the whole driveway because it's for the safety of the children and the teachers <laughs> and all that it's there. What if we have some kind of, since we seem to have an impasse with both the borough and the school board, what if the school would plow, but if there's a pothole, what if the borough would fix the pothole because it's, because it's by the school? I mean, is there something where we can at least come together on both sides where I, you know, if we can have them plow, that's part of our problem, but then the other part is also because of the traffic that we have, there are potholes that are occurring because of the cars. So you have a problem of both. So it's not just the residents who live there, because it's not, it's not them, obviously. It's obviously the parents. For the safety of the children and the teachers, this is the best solution for us to pick up our children. So what if we can both come together, maybe? And if we have the school, like I said, plow, and just maybe the barrel this one time, because of this alleyway, it's a common way, we have well, them do the, the well, potholes. Are we allowed to make repairs to the alleys? That's what we asked the question before. No. It's, it's, it's a barrel. So let's there. pretend for a minute that the pothole wasn't in the alley. And it's in your driveway. The borough can't spend public tax dollars to improve what amounts to private property. And that's exactly what's happening here. Because the borough has no ownership over that alley, then essentially council would be authorizing spending public funds to improve what amounts to private property. What the council has done in, in a couple of exceptions that we noted is that they've begun maintaining. And if you do that in a couple of instances, I think there's two hours in the borough where over years the borough has done that in a regular and consistent way, and under Pennsylvania law, if you do that, effectively the borough has taken control of that alley. We haven't done that here. So the alley is manifestly a private property. And, and in essence, it's the, it's the property owner where the pothole is located who's responsible. Can I ask a question? I mean, you mentioned that there's two alleys in town that exceptions was made. What, what, why was that exception made, and, and do you maintain the potholes for those? It goes back decades. Literally. I mean, it's, it's some instances where we've taken trash trucks to pick up trash and things like that. It's, it's had nothing to do with the situation. Can we require that property owner to replace or fix that pothole? How fair is that to the person who's dealing with absolutely. all our traffic? Though. You know what I mean? You're that's dealing with traffic of the store. Even if it was somewhere else, could we do that? You know, Listen, you know, I, have said, so I have a youth foundation. Yeah. I will yeah. pay my youth foundation will pay to have that pothole filled. I have tired of here putting it, I have it on my agenda. <laughs> and them children have to, I, I agree the children should be dropped off in the alley. Right. That's the safest place for it with the bank. And all the things going on down there, I will have that. I can't tell you how it will happen tomorrow with the weather, I sure. but I will have somebody pass that home. Thank you, Frank. Okay. I, I Thank definitely you. appreciate it. Thank you for stepping but, up. But, well, I appreciate yeah. it. Well, well, one thing I'm concerned is, is that, you know, I understand that, that this went on like four or five years ago. It, it, what I'd like to see if we can do is come up with a long-term solution so, you know, in five years when I'm out of that elementary school, right. it's not it's someone else's problem, problem to be right. back right. here again. I mean, is there any kind of way that we can rezone that street to, to oh, become yeah. something that's... So let's do this at this point is, and it's just one question I have, what was the reasoning that the school won't maintain the alley? It's know? exactly it's what public. Bob said. Uh, yeah, okay. it's, 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 it's a shared... Uh, it's a right, right. It falls okay. under it's a shared... Um, it's and shared same here we get, that they can't spend <coughs> this tax, this is money tax, or money on so property. So here's what I'm going to... Right, I've got a question for you. Let me ask... 
if we went to every property owner and they agreed to give us that section of their property, <coughs> could we give out that debt? Like, it would be like 25 people or 25 so people. Here's, here's the 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 yeah. 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 Have we have all If the borrower decided, if the borrower decided they wanted to take title of the property, the property <coughs> probably the whole length of the act. Because otherwise, your, your own regulations will say you'd have to call the SAC. You don't have to get it on the street. You'd have to get from one side to the other. Everyone deciding with their interest. And frankly, I, I don't know that the, the street would be sized sufficiently to qualify for liquid fuels funding. So if not, I would suggest that if you do that, you reach some agreement with the school district that if it's now public property, they agree to pay for the maintenance since they're using it to their own property. We give it to them and they're responsible for maintaining it. They yeah, they would take it. They would see, take it. Uh, see that. I think it would be better to have the street under the borough's control. Yeah. That's, but just so long as there's a maintenance agreement with the district that they pay the expenses. Yeah. Each homeowner owns half the app. Sure. And I'm working on it right now in my district because you know how I feel about the app. Right. I will have 98% of the people in my district in the next two months with signatures on our petition because I have more traffic on my, in my alley than one of any almost any alley in the borough. And 10th Avenue, 9th Avenue, and this is something we really have to look at. I know it's a lot of money, but it's something. It's it's people use the alleys for streets now, and I don't want to get into it, but they're right. They're right. This is this is something that we have to address. We do road programs every year. We put an alley into the road program, and we and eventually we'll have all the alleys paved. You only have to pave them every 20 years, or every 15 years if you do it properly. Then we have the trash trucks. We have the trash trucks picking up in the alleys where they can, and then we don't have people cutting through our alleys, almost killing people walking out our driveways because they want to get to work because they don't want to wait for the trash truck. And that's a big problem on my west side of my district. So this is something that children are the most important. We have residents walking out our driveways. People are coming up the alleys from Cobble Lane all the way up to Harry Street, Wood Street, 40 miles an hour. In the yeah. So this is something we have to address, and we will address it. But you know, right now I'll have your alley patched. I can't tell you it's going to be this week, but it will be next week, or maybe this week, and I'll have that taken care of. So I appreciate let's it. Let's, you, let's let's do this moving forward. But, and first of all, this is great because you guys came up, rationally expressed a concern. We talk about it. So Ben, council is totally stepping up, taking care of an immediate problem. You know. In my six years now on council, um, it's been a few radically creative ideas on how to resolve things, and people said that'll never work out. And this is this this is a somewhat free-thinking council. So I'm going to ask that it be put on the agenda for another revisit at the workshop. You guys, why don't we come? Don't have to come. Um, we hear you loud and clear. I think these obviously, um, but let, let, let's get a little creative. Um, and think out of the box on this one, um, if that's okay with the rest of the council. Is that okay? Yes. All right. More to come. That's all I could promise. Let me know. More thank to come. You. So again, thank you guys for coming. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.